Hey guys, welcome to the ninth episode of today's Coach's Corner. Tonight's Coach's Corner. Today, tonight. Yeah, it's tonight. It's 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock, right? 8 o'clock on a Monday night. <laughs> How is everyone? Sunny. Good? <laughs> yeah? It's new. I'm good. <clears throat> Nothing's new. Yeah, nothing. I'm no? going home. <laughs> <laughs> For good. <Yeah>. Immigration. <laughs> I'll come back. I'll be back. We'll have um, possibly two special guests next week on, uh, on the next week's episode. So because that's how many people it takes to replace Lenka. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's dive into the questions. Uh, I've been on my current training program for six weeks now. When would be the most appropriate time to change it up? Probably if, mm-hmm. if uh, like any progress you're making kind of stalls, like probably that's the main thing. Like say, if you're not continually getting results or something, or um, that's, pr- that's probably the biggest thing, yeah. Progress stalls, so, yeah. or if you're not having fun anymore, you know, yeah. which will probably take results too. So. Yeah. In the last six weeks, you only get over it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, probably depends on what type of adaptation you're trying to form as well. Like if you have what goals you're trying to hit, so but just what phase you're in of training. If you just keep going in one phase, and you got to change it up at some point. You can't just stay in the same frame, straight same frame, uh, training program forever. Mm. So probably a good time maybe to change it up. I would. Agree as well. Um, I mean, as well, I don't think you have to try and change it totally like drastically as well. You can make small modifications and um, look to try to progress the training volume that you're doing as well at the time. Um, but you don't have to drastically change. But consistency is always going to be the biggest key. Yeah. yeah, and you can use those those training blocks, so four or six weeks in this case, to build off each other. So mm. spend six weeks building some size, and then use that size to go to a six week training uh, strength yeah. block. Working on yeah. some weaknesses, yeah. so yeah, that way it keeps it interesting. Yeah. It keeps it depends it on the goals on. as well. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of various factors that can that takes place into depends answering that right. question. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. there's no black and white answer in fitness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, I've lost weight before, but I always find my stomach is the hardest part to lose. How can I lose stubborn belly fat? How do we do it? <coughs> What's, the What's the secret? What's the secret? Oh, I didn't count that exercise. <laughs> Ab, what's the secret? How do they lose the belly fat? Exercise it well, manage stress, sleep well, drink lots of water. Get some sun, sunlight. Just get a tan. Form, form, <laughs> get a, get a tan. Joking? <laughs> no, just. A tan helps, right? <laughs> form good habits, that's what yeah, you, yeah. that's your yeah. answer. Yeah. Consistency. Form good habits and just be consistent over yeah. time. Yeah. Stress management is a big one as well. Yeah. I think, um, Insulin and cortisol. patience. Don't expect to happen yeah. over time. Mm. So, like you said, consistency. So, mm. just chip away. And I think focusing on the process, not the outcome. Yeah. So, focusing on the training and like changing eating habits and creating really good habits, and then the result will be um, from the process that you've created. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the best answer. Because only exercising is not going to help. No, nah, there's um, so much more to it. You, exactly. You need to change your habits. Especially, nutrition is very important. Well, I think the thing is because people come in here and they train and they think, oh, well, I'm training, but you're putting in hard work in the gym, so it's really important what you do outside, yeah. if not more important. Well, training is a stress as well, so we have to manage that stress, and if you're just stressed with work and everything like that, we're just not managing stress, and that's when it becomes fully hard to lose that belly fat. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I guess, how you're managing outside the gym as well. If you just come in and expect us to just fog yourself for four hours a week and expect your belly fat to go, yeah. it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Consistency, yeah. calorie deficit, consistency, it will, yeah. it will come off. Mm. You, know, you can't choose where you want to lose it from. Uh, I don't know what camera I'm talking to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but over time, it's going to... Yeah. I keep doing it. Um, yeah, over time, it's going to... It will come off, but it's consistency and Good it's going to take patience as well. Structure. Because yeah. 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 a lot of people, like, that will be one of the, like the last place it does go, I think particularly men. Um, and plus like, we're, we gotta look at this, like we're doing this for our health, for our whole life, for the rest of our lives. It's yeah. not just to, you know, for summer or whatever. You, know, you wanna be healthy for the rest of your life. So, yeah. you know, this, you, know, you gotta be patient with it. Yeah. That's a big thing. I think it yeah. comes back to looking at your goals too. Why do you want that? Like, what are you gonna feel, say, when you achieve getting a six pack or something like that? And then align what you're doing with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't explain that very well, but you know, if you're focusing on just getting the six pack. Yeah, exactly. And the motivation isn't really there because 
you were like, oh, yeah, I want it, but you don't really want to make the changes to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. I think you should reassess that and go, do I really want to work as hard as I want to get to get to that, or do I just want to go, eh, not really. Yeah. 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 And be realistic about that. Yeah, um, and there's nothing wrong with that either way, but just knowing, you know, if the motivation's not there to do it, yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. And there's no set exercises as well. Yes. So you, you sometimes see people doing, you know, stomach exercises, looking to lose, you know, belly fat, but it's not going to lose belly fat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't choose where you want to drop it from. Yeah. It's not going to make me have a six pack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately not. Fortunately not. Yeah, that's it. Move. Yeah. Sleep. Manage yeah. stress. Calorie Eat deficit. Good. Calorie deficit. Yeah. Move. Like, move more, move, every twice, day. move more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, just keep like, honestly, move. Yeah. Like, it's, it's our bodies are designed to move, and I think that's what we do. I think it's do. not just thinking of exercises, training in the gym, too. Find stuff nah. that you enjoy, yeah. right? Yeah. Like playing a sport, tennis. getting outside. Yeah. I love tennis. So good. Playing with kids, I don't know, running <laughs> around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, so uh, how much rest should I take in between sets? So it depends. Okay. It depends. It depends yeah. what exercise you're doing, what kind of training you're doing, what are you focusing on. What's your goal? And what's your goal? Like, yeah. uh, so they're like, yeah. Explain. Brief, quiet. Um, so with a training, for example, if you're doing um, elastic training, so strength training, um, so the, the actual time under tension will be shorter. So let's say you're going to be under tension between 8 to 10 seconds, so you should rest 1.3 times of that. Um, if you're doing... Um, Hypertrophy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, well, for strength, you'd say you need a little bit longer? Yeah, if, you, if you're doing um, I guess max effort, obviously, yeah. then you need a little bit longer, so... That's a strength guideline. Yeah, because um, it's more, more neural yeah. as well, so you yeah. Need, yeah. that takes a bit longer to recover. Yeah. CNS to recover, yeah. yeah. So it's like, isn't it like three to five minutes for... Um, yeah, sometimes. Like your lower lifts, like say under five reps. Yeah, if strength is the goal, yeah. Eight yeah. to ten, or eight to twelve reps, you can cut your rest time down to yeah. 60 yeah. to two minutes. Yep. Yeah. And then if your training is just aerobic, if you're running, if you're running for five minutes, then you should be resting for five minutes, so it should be one... Yeah, it's all going to vary depending mm. on the goal. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Probably hypertrophy. If yeah. If you're trying to increase muscle, you probably just you don't need that long rest either. Mm. Just get the work in as well. Mm. Like, you want want to be able to have enough rest to be able to do your next set. If you just go and do like a two exercises superset, for example, and you yeah. just take thirty seconds, there's a good chance you're not going to be able to lift that next weight. So I would yeah. say anywhere from like <clears throat> again, it depends. A minute thirty to two minutes, like mm. not yeah. even, and then you're good to go. Like. No. Try and get that balance between like keeping the next next few sets quality as well. Yeah, you, you don't want to go in too gas, yeah. and then yeah. you just they're not quality yeah. sets anymore. But yeah. also, yeah. Well, I guess if you rest too long, then kind of that stimulus is like diluted a bit. Yeah, exactly. So then you've lost quality there yeah. too. So yeah, balancing that. Balancing yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I really liked Luke's Instagram post on pronated and supinated stance when squatting, but wanted to know how you can tell if you have either the, either and the best way to fix it. By the way, never miss an episode and loving the content. Um, okay, so first of all, how can you tell? Okay, um, what I'll probably do, if you don't have a trainer, I'll probably set up a video camera behind you and then you'll be able to see the back of your heel kind of thing. And that's where you're gonna start to see if you pronate and supinate. Now you have to know the difference between what pronation is, what supination is. Pronation is the feet collapsing inward. Think of the arch in your foot, that collapsing inward. Yeah. And then supination is the other way, so you're going on the outside of your foot. Okay, so you gotta first you gotta obviously film it and see if you actually doing it. You could be you could be fine, um, not even do it. But that's how you see if you are doing it. Um, and then how do you fix it? Okay, so pronation is probably the most common one and for some people um, you can kind of just fix it through technique so ensuring that you're pushing through your big toe little toe and your heel and you're maintaining the balance throughout so for the pronation I'll probably look to maybe think more pushing through the toe the big toe because you're pronating in okay so you can fix it there um, another thing you can do if you are over pronating is um, obviously exercises for it so to strengthen the arch of the foot which a lot of people struggle with so all those um, small muscles in, inside the foot, the ligaments and stuff like that around that area, you can do strengthening and stuff. So 
it's hard to explain like there's so many exercises. I think the, the, the best one is when you imagine that you want to pick up something from the floor. Yeah. Even you can you can drop a um, towel or something. Yeah, the, um, the on towel the floor grabs good. And yeah. try to grab it. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the easy ones to explain. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, yeah, you can I'm, do it anywhere. Yeah, there's so, there's so many exercises out there for it, but pretty much what you're doing, you're strengthening that arch and those um, intrinsic foot muscles um, if you're over for Now, su supinating, like the other way, most of the time you're probably looking at more motor pattern, I would say, like just developing and just working on without load, just um, evenly distributing the weight across your foot. Strengthening exercise will help, but it's probably better for pronation and arch more. Um, but for simulation, just rewiring that movement pattern, that motor pattern, will probably be the best bet for you. And just work with that load. So if you're squatting, just think of like, yeah, distributing the weight, even gripping your feet into the ground, all those three things. Most of the help, I find the three points help the most. Yeah, I think yeah. when people, if they say push knees out, they will. Yeah, um, okay, so yeah. Make sure that if it's, so the whole point of um, knee driving with your knees is to get your glutes active. So yeah. you want to make sure that you're using your big toe and yeah. you're not compensating with your yeah. If you're doing that, yeah. yeah, and I think that's what I said last night. If, so the, if the foot and ankle's not right, it's going to affect the knee, it's going to affect the hip, it's going to go all upstream. So, if you're over pronating, what will generally happen if your foot's coming in, what's going to happen to the knee? The knee is going to come in, okay? So, that's that's an area you might you might think, Oh, my knees are coming in, what am I doing wrong? It could just be maybe your, your feet that could be the issue. Um, so Which it's, most of the time. Yeah, so that's it's important to look at that and just be like, oh, it's my knees, I've got to push my knees out. But then you might push your knees out and you might super, and you're just not fixing the foot stability problem overall. Mm. So hopefully that answers the question. I don't know. Mm. Is that yeah. it? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> very yep. good. Yeah, careful, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well explained. Cool. Okay. Um, how do I build a booty? <laughs> how do you do it? Frequency. Frequency is going to be a big part in that. Booty, glutes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> let's call it what it does. Uh, glutes, so, hip extension, yep. extension volume. Yeah, volume, yeah. volume yeah. progressive overload, frequency. Exercise choice. Exercise selection. Yeah. Which we've done in a previous episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah we've done that. Yeah, we all went through our. Okay, just it, at the end of the day, it's, it's a muscle group, and just like with any other muscle, if you want it to grow, you've got to follow the principles we just said. That's the main thing. Like yeah, that, that's kind of like the structure of, of how we would provide um, the answer to that. Um, but then this is going to be consistency as well. You know, keeping the same workouts and, and getting stronger, lifting more weight over time, more repetitions. Um, there's many ways that incorporate progressive overload as well in that. Um, but yeah, it's consistency and kind of sticking to it getting stronger, getting and better with that. And nutrition as well. Like, yeah, you need to be eating sufficient protein. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So. I think as well, like, I don't know, I think there's stigma of like booty and um, resistance bands, like, they have a place, but it's not the be all and end all. So if you're just trying to play glutes, don't just do all banded stuff. Like, there's so many better exercises, like yeah. squats, deadlifts, oh, you need a hip thrust, thrust. Yeah. you need like some type of load, reverse lunges, like mm. lunges, anything like that where there's hip extension and you've got load, that's probably going to be better than just walking with a band around your knees side to side. Like, yeah, yeah it's good, it's good, but you need more load. Yeah. And I think most, some people, females in particular, like they think like that's the answer because they see on Instagram and all these Insta girls are just doing all these banded things. They probably just do it. They probably do a lot of compounds as well. And they yeah. did. That's you know, they, 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 very good marketing. Yeah. It's good marketing yeah. for them because like it's not, you're gonna watch show, it. Yeah. They don't show all the work they yeah. did to get to that. Oh, that's like, a good that, that was squats squat, that was deadly. behind that. Because so. squats are deadly, so they don't really sell. Like the squats are deadly yeah. aren't sexy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they're not gonna put that in because it's not gonna help with their marketing. Yeah, I would probably just add. Um, a lot of people have inactive glutes, um, so you can do as many squats as you want, as many hip thrusts as you want, but if you are not using glutes, they're obviously not going to grow. Yeah. So make sure that you activate your glutes before the workout, which the bended stuff is great for activation. <laughs> um, that's how I would start the session and then go into the compounds. So you yeah. make sure that you are using the right muscle. Yeah. In saying that as well, like form is going to be a huge part of that. Like for instance, the hip thrust, if you're not you know, contracting and, and closing down your abdominal when you're coming up to hip thrust and you're arching your back, you know, the tension's not going to be on your glutes anymore, it's a lot more on your lower back. So the load isn't going to your glutes where you, you know, where the movement's for. So form is going to be a huge part in um, building a pair of glutes. 
or set of glutes. Okay, let's set. see. <laughs> nice set of glutes. <laughs> so that's how we do it. Okay, uh, final question. This is pretty fun. If you weren't a personal trainer, what would you be? <laughs> Steve, what would you be? Well, <laughs> yeah, Steve, I kind of so, yeah, so I'm thinking, I'm not sure exactly, but probably something that suits my personality. So probably something like like analysis and systems based that's a lot of focus around organization or something. So yep. I think that kind of reflected in the way I coached as well. So yep. it's very structured based and everything. So. Yep. On the spot. So what's the job? What's the job? What's the job? But uh, yeah, I'm not sure to be honest, but something around that, just something yeah. organised and structured, yeah. analysis and something like that. So yeah. maybe I'll think of something. Ab? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, was... What is it? Physio. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would probably be an event manager because okay. I do enjoy um, managing managing being bossy <laughs> and I <laughs> you are we haven't noticed <laughs> and I enjoy um, events as well so yeah I think something like that mm. um, I don't know I've always like I don't know my focus when I always like was looking for something to do for work is like I want to help people this is why I love this job but I'd probably do like I don't know, I wouldn't mind being a maybe police officer or a paramedic. That'd be pretty interesting. I reckon that'd be pretty cool. I'd be a good I'd, paramedic. I reckon it'd be <laughs> good. It's You'd be too nice to be a police, police officer. officer eh? Are you serious? <laughs> I reckon I'd like up for me. I'd, 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 I reckon like something like that would just be good. That's what I like anyway. Um, I would probably do, actually before I was doing this, um, I used to do, uh, I was studying uh, marketing. Um, so I found that it was quite interesting, although that I, uh, <laughs> I failed my course, <laughs> failed it, um, it was a year of course and it just was, felt like a bit of a waste of time, but I was actually interested in it, obviously not too interested at the time, <laughs> but um, I think that's really the only other thing that I could think of that, you know, well now, to this day, like marketing, it, it excites me now too, so, um, but I'll probably do something like that. YouTube fitness model. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, but YouTube wasn't around back then. Well, it was, but it wasn't to what it's like now. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm getting older. Actually, now. you know what? I've changed my mind. I'm going to be a YouTuber, so. <laughs> this is the launch of my first YouTube. Follow me. <laughs> That's right. All right, cool. That's uh, the rest of the questions for today. Um, if you have questions for our next episode, we'll have two special guests uh, for next week. Lenka will not be here. She's uh, getting deported back to Europe. <laughs> Uh, I mean. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, if you have questions, shoot them to our Insta Instagram page, Squat Club AU, <laughs> and we will see you guys in the next episode. See you next week. Peace. <laughs>